Welcome to our fourth video in our series on cost estimation and cost behavior. In this video, we'll be looking at our fifth method of estimating costs, regression analysis. Regression analysis is also often referred to as linear regression, ordinary least squares, or OLS. Let us look at our objectives for this video. We will begin by considering what exactly regression analysis is. We will then look at the advantages and disadvantages of this method. As with our previous methods, we will work through an example for regression analysis and compare the outcome to that of the HALO method and scatter plots. Finally, we will also consider some more advanced issues underlying regression analysis, such as reliability and the underlying assumptions. So what is regression analysis? Regression is a statistical technique to determine the line of best fit. So you should remember when we looked at scatter plots, we plotted the data points on the graph and visually tried to guess the best line that connected these points. Regression uses maths to do this. So how does it do it? Basically, the method is based on the principle of minimizing the sum of the squares of the vertical deviations between the line that is estimated and the actual data points. The line of best fit has the smallest sum of squares of vertical deviations compared to any other line that is drawn. Now this sounds very complicated, so let us draw a picture to see what we are looking at. Let us assume that this graph represents our actual data points, being the dots, and our line of best fit, being the straight line. Our vertical deviation is the difference between the actual dot and the estimated point where that point should be on the line. So if we look at point A, point A has an activity level of 750 on the x-axis, and what appears to be about 3,850 Rand on the y-axis. Now, if the red line represents our line of best fit, we would have estimated the Rand value at an activity level of 750 to be about 3,100 Rand. So our vertical deviation, represented by the green arrow, is 750 Rand. We square these deviations because the square of any number is positive. And what we see is that our, devi our vertical deviations could be either positive or negative depending on if they fall above or below the estimated line. The goal of regression then is to minimize the sum of these squared vertical deviations. This means that the line of best fit is closest to all of our data points. So now that we know what regression analysis is and some of the basics of its mechanics, let us consider the method's advantages and disadvantages. The first key advantage is that it is objective. Therefore, everyone should arrive at the same cost equation. We also see that it is a mathematical model. As a result, we have tests to determine the model's reliability. On the disadvantage side, it can be difficult to calculate. As we will see shortly, in the past, we had to use complex formula to calculate the model. However, with advances in calculators and computers, regression has become a lot more accessible to everyone. The second disadvantage is that certain underlying assumptions need to be met. We will briefly discuss these towards the end of the video. So, how do we calculate the regression line? The first way to do it is manually with the formula. These formula are displayed on screen. The first formula is our basic cost equation, which we are trying to calculate. We then get two equations, one to calculate A, our fixed cost, and one to calculate B, our variable cost. It is important that you calculate the value of B first. This is because B is required when we are calculating A, as highlighted on the screen. So let us do this in an example. We will use the same example that we have used for scatter plots and for the HALO method. In this example, we have been given data for the last 12 months for repairs and maintenance. Remember, our machine hours was our X variable or cost driver, while our maintenance cost was our Y variable or total cost. Now, if we look at our equations, we ask ourselves, what information do I need? If we look at equation A, we need the sum of Y, the sum of X, and N. We can calculate the sum of x and the sum of y by simply adding up all the values of machine hours and maintenance costs. 
So we can use the sum function in Excel. N then represents the number of observations. We can use the count function. And we see that we have 12 observations. If we look at our equation 4b, we need the sum of x multiplied by y, we need the sum of x and the sum of y, which we already have, we also need the sum of x squared. Notice that for our last term, that the sum of x, which we already have, is in brackets. So we need to calculate the sum of x first, and only then square it. We also need the value of n, which we already have. So let us do these calculations now. Remember, we need xy, and we can simply calculate xy by taking the machine hours multiplied by the maintenance cost. We can drag this down, and then we can use the sum function to calculate this. We then also need the value of x squared. To do this, we can simply take the value of x and raise it to the power of 2. Again, we can drag this down, and we can use the sum function to calculate the sum of x squared. We then need to calculate the values of b and a. Remember, we're going to calculate the value of b first. So to calculate the value of b, we need to take the number of observations n and multiply it by the sum of x and y. We then need to subtract the sum of x multiplied by the sum of y. This is all then divided by n, being 12, multiplied by the sum of x squared, subtract the sum of x raised to the power of 2. And we get our value of b being 3 rand and 30 cents. We then need to calculate the value of a, and we can calculate the value of a by taking the sum of y and dividing it by n. We then subtract b multiplied by the sum of x divided by n. And we get our value of a, or our fixed cost, at being 705 rand and 8 cents. We can therefore derive our cost equation as y is equal to 3,3046875x plus rand 705,08. You'll notice that there are some extra decimals if we increase the decimal places. So we can add in those decimals quickly. And we have our cost equation. Now this process might not look so bad when I am doing it in Excel, but when doing it on a piece of paper, there is a lot of room for error. Also, what I have done is not very efficient, especially when Excel and other software have built-in functions for doing this. Now let us repeat this process, but rather let us learn to use the functionality of Excel. So we're going to do it on this worksheet where we already have our comparison for our scatter plot and our high low method. So how do we use Excel to estimate the regression equation? The first thing I do is I go to the data ribbon. In the data ribbon I look for the analysis section and I select data analysis. I then look for regression, I select it and I press OK. I now have some inputs I need to enter my x and y variables. I start with my y input range, which I can select as my maintenance costs. I then need to select my x input range, which I select as my machine hours. It then gives me some options for labels, the constant being zero and the confidence level. We can ignore these for now. It then asks us for our output options. We are going to select new worksheet. Again, we can ignore the options around residuals and normal probability. 
We can then press OK. Our output is now presented on a new sheet. We can resize the columns so that they are easier to see. When developing our cost equation, the important elements to look for are our coefficients, which I am now highlighting in yellow. The intercept represents our fixed costs, while the x variable 1 represents our variable costs. So based on this, we can see that our cost equation is going to be y is equal to 3,3046875x plus rand 705,078125, which is exactly the same as what we saw under our manual method. We can then copy this to our previous regression sheet so that we can see it easily, and I will make this line blue. Now let us plot this on the graph, like we did for the high-low method. So the first thing we need to do is estimate our points on the line. We do this by applying the cost function to our machine hours. So we say equals 3,3046875 multiplied by our machine hours plus the fixed costs of 705,078125 we can then drag this down using the bottom right hand corner to all our data points. Next, to put this onto the graph, we click on our graph and under the chart design ribbon, we can click select data. Now our graph is getting quite full, so the best way to add this extra data is to click add under the legend entries. It then asks us to specify our X and Y data. So our x data would again be the machine hours, whereas the y data would be the regression results. We can select OK, and you will see a series 3 has appeared. We can then press OK. Now for my graph, you can see it has already come up as a straight line. If we want to change that, we can click on it, and we can, under the chart design ribbon, click change chart type. And to make it a straight line, we want to choose scatter with straight line. On the format ribbon, we can then change the color to blue to match our wording below, and we can make it a bit heavier so that it is easier to see. We can now see how different our three lines are under each of the methods that we came up with. The final way we need to be able to perform regression, which may be a bit more functional, if you are writing a test or exam and don't have access to a spreadsheet or other statistical software, is to use a scientific calculator. I will be demonstrating using a Casio FX82 ES Plus. So we have our data on the side here, and we need to see what we're going to do on the calculator. The first step is to switch our calculator on. We then need to set up our stats mode. We are presented with historical data, so we don't need frequencies. To remove frequencies, we press the shift and mode for the setup option. We use the arrow keys to scroll down, and we then select option 3 for stat. We select option 2 to switch the frequencies off. Now to get to stats mode, we press the mode button. We then select option 2 for stats and we select option 2 again for regression. We are then presented with a table for x and y. We fill in the data by entering the number and pressing the equal sign. So for period 1, we would enter 400 and press equals. We then navigate to the y value by using the arrow keys. Again, we enter our value of 2100, and then we press equals. We repeat this process until all our data is entered. Once all our data is entered, we press AC. Now we, to get to our statistics, we press Shift and 1. We select option 5 for regression. Now we select option 2 for B, and we press equals. This represents our variable costs, and we should notice that it matches our values 
derived under the manual and Excel methods. We can then go back to our previous menu and select one for A. A represents our fixed costs. Using A and B as our fixed and variable costs respectively, we can derive our cost equation. The next thing we need to look at under regression analysis is determining the reliability of the equation we derive. We can do this by calculating the R squared. This measure indicates to us how well a change in our X variable explains the change in our Y variable. The R squared will always fall between 0 and 1. A value of 0 indicates no explanatory power, while a value of 1 indicates perfect explanatory power. Therefore, the higher the number, the better. However, always make sure that the relationship makes logical sense. Again, we can calculate the R squared manually using this equation on screen. Alternatively, we can see it in Excel on the worksheet with the detailed calculations. I'm highlighting it now. Notice that Excel also provides us with something called the adjusted R squared. The adjusted R squared is a modified version of the R squared, which has simply been adjusted for the number of independent variables used to predict the dependent variable. Finally, we can also calculate the R squared on the calculator. Again, once we have entered our data, we want to press Shift and then 1 to get to our main menu. We press 5 for regression data and we press 3 for R. Remember to use the square function before pressing the equal sign to arrive at the R squared. Now let us very briefly look at some advanced issues around regression. We are only going to look at these briefly and I encourage you to look further into them. The first issue is multiple regression analysis. Often what happens is that one cost driver cannot sufficiently explain the cost. With multiple regression analysis, several cost drivers can then be used to estimate the cost. On screen is a comparison of simple regression analysis compared to multiple regression analysis. We also need to then consider the various underlying assumptions of regression analysis. The first assumption is linearity. Linearity is basically that our data represents a line rather than a curve. In our first graph, we see that the points make a straight line upwards. In our second graph, however, the points form more of a curve, which decreases initially, turns around, and then starts to increase. Our next underlying assumption is multicollinearity. This refers to a correlation amongst the x or independent variables. If our independent variables are related to each other, it becomes difficult to separate the effects on the y or dependent variable. Next, we have heteroscedasticity, which is when the error, or the vertical deviation we looked at earlier, is not constant. In the first instance, which is termed homoscedasticity, which is what we are looking for, we see that the error variance remains constant. In the second example, however, we see that it is increasing. The next underlying assumption is autocorrelation, which refers to when the errors are correlated with each other. And finally, we have the issue of normality of the error sigil. Basically, the error terms need to be normally distributed. Remember to join us for our next video, where we will be looking at the basics of the learning curve.